but never say never I guess. Do it blowing this crap off it. You fuck you and do it. Hi guys. Um just a quick intro really. I, I guess from what you've just seen, you may be guessing what I'm up to. Uh, a, a friend gave me an old chainsaw, which he thought were a, a cheap Chinese one, but when we looked at it, it think it's a made in Germany. Absolutely superb inside. Uh, it won't run. It, it, it won't rev, and I suspected possibly that the um, diaphragm had split in the carburetor, but I don't know. I never looked into that. Um, all I wanted were the internals at the engine to build the hit and miss engine that I plan to do. Uh, I've seen lots of little ones. Andrew Whale made one, learning and turning. Lots of other people. And they're like five, six inches long maybe, complete. With little flywheels. Uh, I wanted to build something a bit bigger but not massive and heavy. So. Uh, that's what we're on with so uh, it, it's going to be probably a multi-part episode uh, series because there's so much work to do uh, and I'm winging it because I, I've I've got some drawings but the David Kurzel drawings and I'm not working to his drawings I'm working from my own in which I'm making fag packet drawings really because uh, I want to make it bigger and I want to make it slightly different and possibly a different type of uh, governor as well. So uh, without further ado we'll get on and we'll carry on stripping this engine and then we're going to do some flywheels from some uh, dumbbells, barbells, you know the weight lifting weights uh, that again a friend gave me. I'm trying to build this thing for nothing and I'm not, I'm not cheapskating but the basic model from somewhere like Hemingway's kits for a hit and miss engine, for the little dinky one, is about £300. Uh, a set of drawings, I think it's £28 or £29 for a set of drawings only, and buy your own materials. But really, it's not suitable for purpose what I want to do. I want to say build one maybe one and a half times bigger, something with a, a one inch piston bar. Uh, and anyway. We'll work it out as we go along. Okay guys. One little engine. How oh, dinky is that? That Conrad's bronze. Got loads of uh, slap that way, but I suppose it must be meant to be like that. Needle roller bearing, it had one foot little end, needle roller. It's a shame Conrad went longer. I'll work out what stroke is on that. Because <laughs> it did make it's, it's some ready made crank in it, which would be great for a little engine. Don't have to be that piston. Could make a smaller piston. enough. I just needed to get them to, to arms um, split in half so I could make a different conrod. Oh yeah, it's, well, I guess uh, you can see what we're up to now. So the, this is the crankshaft from that little, um, we just nearly said still saw from the chainsaw. 
a little fixture I made just to press out the crank pin. I wasn't sure how tight that would be, but it came out fairly easy. Why did I strip it down? Because the piston from that uh, chainsaw is too big for making a mess engine of the size I want to make. It's uh, not far off inch from 5 eighths. So it's 40 mil. It's a 40 mil piston that. So that's too big. So I need to make a piston smaller. Probably, did I say bore an inch? 25.4 mil. And let's take this conrod off. Lovely little needle roller. I'm going to try and keep that. And then I'm going to make a conrod. I think I'm zoomed in too far. So I'm going to, I'm going to make a conrod. And uh, it's got to be longer than that. Two millimetres is that crank. 16 from the centre of the uh, main shaft to the crank pin centre. It's 16, so it's got a total throw of 32 mil, and it's got to have a bore of 25 mil. Now the conrod, I want to make longer, not because it'll travel further, because it's only going to travel 32 millimeter. What I want it to be longer for is so you can see it. That's the block of alloy that we're going to use for the water tank and the bore. Uh, and the cast iron cylinder line that I carry the piston and that will go in there backwards and forwards none of these measurements have been determined yet I have got a full set of David Kurzel droids that were free uh, and that you can readily download if you want free of charge um, as long as you're not selling out he doesn't mind but they were made in 2002 stroke 2003 so they're very very old a long time ago I don't know whether it's still contactable or not. Um, because they're all in Imperial. And I'm going to be working in metric. Simply because if I work in Imperial, it's going to cost me. I'm going to have to start buying all new bolts, taps, dies. I've got most metric stuff from M2 upwards. And I've got boxes of stainless M M2 bolts. Right. This is going to be for the cylinder barrel, which I wanted to make out of cast iron. And I found this metal in my drawer, and I'm assuming it is cast iron. Now, it's coming off in right fine little particles, but it's not dusty. There doesn't seem to be a lot of dust in it, but it's very, very fine little particles. And it's very heavy. The bar was very heavy. So I suspect it is cast iron. It looked like it were rusty, but when I cleaned it off, it cleaned off like those V-blocks did. They're not actually rusty, just a coating on it. So I, I don't know. It's magnetic. It's very heavy. So I do suspect it is cast iron, but I've no proof that it is. 25, that's 20, what, 28, 30, 1. And we've got 34, so plenty to go at. However, what I mustn't forget, and if I do, I'm in trouble, is at the top of the bar, where the cylinder head seats, it needs to be thicker. And then I need to machine that aluminium block, what's going to accept this, with a counter bar in it that accepts this. And then you compress your head gasket onto that. I suppose you call it a top hat liner. Otherwise, it'd push through, wouldn't it? So I must be careful to, to, to know my stroke. I need to do some more working out because I need to know my exact stroke. I think what I might do is take that out and carry on with, let me show you what I've got. I did tell you that I wanted to try and make this as cheap as possible, a, a, a note engine. Now, a friend of mine who did a bit of weightlifting and he don't need these anymore he's given me these i've got two of those and two of those now 
I think they'll be too light and too small for flywheels but I think they'll be bang on so I, I think the ones on the uh, Perzel drawings are 4 inch and they're f over 5 but they've got the round on there which I'm going to machine off to, so that's smooth all the way around I've got to then get them in miller machine I'll get them in there I could do it with maybe a, a lathe tool I don't know whether it would or not or if not on rotary table with a milling tool and get rid of this pro power 1.25 kilograms machine that off same on that side machine that off and then I guess create spokes that look like the Kersel drawing ones are which like that I suppose that idea so I'm not making it to David Kersel's drawings I'm, but I'm using a lot of ideas of his design for what it'll look like right so problem fixture plates I've got I'll show you what I've got this came with my food this fixture plate and it don't fit it, it goes on about two and a half threads and it goes tight now I did check with some thread gauges and the thread on that looks to be the same and feels with the thread gauges the same as what's on the nose of the spindle however it don't fit the uh, inside edge here that goes over the what they call the index bit to centralize it there's no problem with that it's the thread now somebody once did tell me that there were an odd uh, boxford thread that were very similar to a myford but not identical it could be that that's what it is and i think it were thread pitch there's like 55 60 degree i don't know but something to do with that but it won't go on so i want to turn these down and do some work on these weightlifting barbells to make them in flywheels my idea was to bolt them onto that and put them on face plate and maybe some packing and work on them i can't do it forget that that's out the window so i've racked my brains on what i can do and what i have done is and it's, it's amazing how this all worked out but uh, I've, I've, I've stolen the drawbar at my Tom Senior and it fits down the MT2 hole of the Myford spindle so I've got this face cutter is a 22mm face cutter and it had key lock key keys in there to lock it so I've taken that off, I've taken the keys off and put them on there so I can put it all back later and I'm going to fit that in my foot uh, without the chuck on so I've got a mandrill then the idea is I can then bolt that onto this mandrill I've got a bolt and I'll have to get, right so what I'm going to have to do then is make a large washer or some sort of grip on face and then measure the inside diameter of that which I already have done with uh, this, these toys the the uh, draper bow gauges which I thought I bought them and I thought I'll never use them and I have so put bow gauge in there and check that I checked it with the Digis, but I also checked it with some good uh, micrometers too uh, and I've got the the inner bar of that is 26.8 millimeter so I need to make a sleeve that will fit in here and reduce down to this which is yep that's bang on 22 which I've measured again with mics uh, and that's bang on 20 I need to make a sleeve that will go in there that's 22 mil bar and outside diameter of 26.8 millimeter so i'm going to make that all about doing these little models it's fixtures and fittings isn't it tons and tons of fixtures 
what I am going to try and remember to do if I can is every time I make something in some sort of fixture is put them in a box and keep them all um, and then at the end I can just see how many different fixtures that I made So that's another fixture made. I think it might be one more to make. Might be out of steel or washer for the top uh, to hold it all on. I'll clean that off and then that should just stick proud and then the weight goes on. Come on. that and I'll probably need a washer then because the the bolt that wants to go in the end of there is that so I'll need a, a large washer I might have something but it needs to go tight and I'm, I, I think do I lock tight it as well or is there going to be enough bite on that ah but
Keep that a little bit too long. Well, that's my idea. Alright guys, after quite a lot of slogging away, we've we've taken one of these, the weightlifting weights that a friend gave me, which is number two, and made it into that. The flywheels for a hit and miss engine that I'm going to build, and uh, which I've probably told you a dozen times already. I don't know if these are going to be too heavy. Don't know. If you see the original uh, hit and miss engines, the, the fanboy, big, big, full size ones, I mean, flywheels are huge. It's like two hands and it's with the. So maybe big flywheels are better. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know. But I've done that one and it's taken me like two days, my days. Probably a, a long day. Maybe a day and a half. Uh, of course, the only bad thing is, I've got to start all over again and do this one. Uh, I made a mistake really because I sat that on the bed of the milling machine and I put centre in there and it it, it was centre of that and I bored it, but it wasn't centre of this. This is a dog rough casting. So I've got a mandrel set up which you've probably seen already and I'll do this one and get this flat on outside like that one and then I can grip it in four jaw. And then I can true, true bore it, can't I? Through bore, true bore it, right through. Uh, to the same size as this one, so I make two bushes the same. So this little crankshaft we've got, and whether it's going to be strong enough, I'm sure it is. Um, today this piece of brass has come, so I've had to buy something. Everything so far hasn't cost me a penny, it's, it's all been free. And the whole idea of building this energy in well, uh, I think um, Andrew Will, uh, learning and turning, Andrew Will, he, he built uh, an odds, odds and ends, I think they call it, engine. Uh, basically, what bits you've got scrap in your, in your bins, but you always end up having to buy something, don't you? Uh, but that's going to be the Conrod, well, the original Conrod is that one which I've showed you before. Um, and this obviously is a lot bigger. Now, I'm going to use the same size big end because it's a lovely roll of bearing that fits on onto that crank pin. Um, so, it's perfect and there's no play in it. So, I'm going to do the same as. 
So the con rod I'm going to make, I'm going to make it to fit on there. Obviously it can only be as wide as that bush, that uh, needle roller, that's the width. So this bar needs to be milled down. Uh, and then I want to make what I'm going to try and make a really nice con rod for, you know, See that flying backwards and forwards. Most people use um, aluminium and it would have been ch cheaper for me to get a piece of aluminium. Uh, but I didn't. I thought, no, a piece of brass, it's going to look nice. It's not going to be that length, but it's got to be a lot longer than that because it's got to go through that block, that bar, um, and it wants to be sufficiently away from them flywheels so that you see it going, you know, when it's running so yeah there's going to be a fair bit of work on that con rod because I'd like to it's going to be tapered down obviously I'm still leaning on a one inch piston uh, did I work it out it's something like 22cc it'd work out at from my bar because um, that I said that was 16 inch yeah so 16 inch throw, so total is 32 in it. So it's got a 32 inch stroke, you tell me. A 32 inch stroke, um, and it's gonna have, let's say 25 mil bore, 25 mil multiplied by 3.142, the pi, uh, it comes out of whatever, and then multiplied by your stroke, which is gonna be at 32 millimeter. I'm sure I worked it out. At, it went either when it's 17. Well, it might either 17 or 22. <laughs> so this is one of the crankshaft webs. I took them down with the uh, sander, the um, angle grinder, and. Um, a flat disc on uh, and then I'm, I've milled it to get it flat a uh, bit rough that it could do with stoning I guess it's uh, picking up a bit well maybe I should have used a bit of oil but it'll smoke quite mad I guess um, in it got it back flat again just needs filing up so that's the two halves done what I'm, why have I done that because this were quite thick and it had made the con rod very thin and I'm making it out of brass so um, I can make a, a wider con rod now that's why I've done it Right guys, that's um, the end of part one. Uh, I don't know how many parts there's going to be to this, but uh, there were certainly an awful lot of work on these. I mean, they've turned out absolutely stunning to say that there were some old weights from a, a weightlifting set. I'm quite amazed. I, I didn't think it would turn out as nice as that. Um, I keep looking, oh yeah, so they're the smaller ones that he gave me, but personally they're only half a kilogram and by the time you machined them down, I don't think they really would have been uh, heavy enough for what I'd like to see and I, I can't see any reason why a big flywheel isn't probably better, I just hope it don't make them too heavy so that when it kicks it don't break the con rod that's one worry but then compression the written compression ratio is only about four and a half to one five to one or something uh, so there's probably not a lot of kick in them anyway they do so uh, part two um, I'm hoping to make a start on the cylinder block uh, next uh, now that piece of cast iron that 
I probably showed you in part one. I want hundred percent sure that it was cast iron. And I'm leaning to well one guy had a look at it and he said no that's not it's that is not cast iron. Uh I sort of I've actually had to buy a piece. So I'm keeping a tabs on what I'm spending. But that one nineteen pounds seventy five P for that chunk. It's a forty mil diameter cast iron. So that's for the cylinder bar. Won't get too out of it, but yeah. So that's for that. But I'm not gonna be doing that next. My part two is probably gonna be all concentrate on that cylinder because there's quite a lot of detail in it. Uh, and I, obviously I wanna get it right. And then there's the hole to bar down it for the water jacket, etc. Although uh, some people say that you don't really even need a water jacket. They do it just because it looks good. But because it's a hit and miss and it, it only fires every now and then, it, it literally cools itself uh, and they never get warm. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Give us a like. Uh, and if you do like it and you've never watched this channel before, uh, click on that subscribe, it doesn't cost anything. It doesn't cost you any money to click on subscribe and you can subscribe to as many people as you want. I think I'm subscribed to something like 400 different uh, people. So yeah. Thanks guys, hope you liked it and I will try and make it part two, <laughs> not as long, I think it's worth 30, it's about 30 minutes long maybe, I know they're too long but there's so much work goes into it that, anyway, you know what I mean.